this is lecture 18, which is uh, going to concern tangent spaces and their equations. So here's two problems we're going to we're going to figure out how to do. In addition to the notes, I'll do this example one uh, and example two as as we go on today. But um, I'll come back to those once we once we learn the material we need to do them. Um, so this is from page 206 and 212 in the lecture 2020 lecture notes. Um, so. Basically, the tangent space to a surface is is a plane which kind of touches the surface and, and just stays close to the surface. Now, if we think about a surface in three dimensions, we have three basic ways to describe it. The one is as a level surface, the other is as a parametrized surface, and and thirdly as a graph, right? And these are, um, um, you know, not mutually exclusive, exclusive viewpoints. There's there's way of uh, interchanging between these. But um, we want to figure out how to understand these surfaces and how to find their um, their tangent plane. And one of the keys to that is finding a vector field, which is called the normal vector field to the surface. Now, in the posted notes, this is more color coded, which is kind of nicer. Unfortunately, my printout's black and white here. But um, what we're visualizing here, I'll try to zoom in. Is the, um, the the surface is kind of that that wrinkled sheet, right? And then above the circle surface, we have these lines. Those are um, I'm imagining um, parameter lines. So, like if we think about the parameterization of the the surface in terms of u and v, those lines along the surface would be like u equal to a constant or v equal to a constant. The the u v coordinate lines on the surface. Uh, little black arrows that point perpendicular to the surface, those are the normal vector field, and um, that's that's kind of how it goes. So we'd like to understand how to calculate a normal vector field to a given surface, and um, so, you know, we're going to need different kinds of techniques for different kinds of surfaces. Here's another picture. There's a, a donut, or a, toro a, tor a toroid, and you can see the little vector field pointing perpendicular to the surface like um, I'd say like hairs on a donut but that seems wrong um, and then here's another another surface again you can see little normal vector fields just pointing up perpendicular to the surface how do we calculate that normal vector field to a given surface is a question so to start with we already know how for a level surface because we learned before that if we calculate um, the gradient to the level surface that gives us the normal vector field and um, you know the tangent plane at the point x not y not z not um, for the level surface f of x y z equal to k is just given by the gradient evaluated at the point in question dotted with this this difference factor um, so um, now I guess technically speaking for a given surface you could either go up or go down um, the, the choice of normal vector is not unique, you know? That's what this remark's about. So, um, this remark's about... Um, anyway, here's an example. Example 4.6.2. Let me zoom out a bit here. Um, so find the equation of the tangent plane and the normal line to the surface f of x, y, z equal to x squared minus 2y squared plus z squared plus y, z equal to 2 at 2, 1, minus 1. So first of all, do you believe me? Is 2, 1, minus 1 actually on that surface? Let's check. Sometimes my students question that and they find out that I, I made a mistake. Let's check me on that one. If we plug in x equals to 2, y equals to 1, z equals to minus 1, do we actually get back out 2? So we've got 4 minus 2 times 1, which is 2, plus minus 1 squared, which is 1, plus yz, well, y times z would be minus 1. And what's that equal to? I've got 2 plus 1 minus 1, that's 2. Check. All right, so that is, in fact, a legitimate point on the surface de defined by that, that equation. All right, great. Then we can calculate the gradient to that, and we get partial f partial x is 2x partial f partial y is minus 4y from that term 
um, plus z from the last term there. And then partial f partial z is 2z plus y. Great. Now this, this gives us the normal vector field. If you give me any point x, y, z on the surface, that's the gradient to that. Um, so we actually can think about this attaching a gradient vector at each point in the surface. But to focus our attention here on that point, plug in the point 2, 1, minus 1. That gives us the normal vector to the surface at that particular point. And um, so then we've got a normal vector, we've got a point. We go back to the first part of the course, we write down the equation for the plane. So 4 times x minus 2 plus rather minus 5 times y minus 1 and minus z times uh, minus times z plus 1 equal to 0. And there you go. That is the equation for the tangent plane right there. And um, the parametric equation for the normal line, we just take the point and point it in the direction of the normal just like we did before. Um, so there you go. There's an example. Um, so I think at this point we can go back and we can try to do my first example on the uh, on the cover sheet here. All right, so let's go back and do my first example. All right, so do 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 do. do, do. Let me find a marker. I like how this is green one. I like green. All right, come on. Let me zoom out a bit here so I can write better. All right, so. So first of all, I should check, is my point actually on the surface? Well, um, 1 cubed times minus 1 to the 4th is 1, plus minus 1 cubed is minus 1. 1 minus 1, 0. Good, that point's on the surface, just checking. And so identify that, first of all, we have to identify that the level function um, for this surface is x cubed y to the 4th plus z cubed, there's my level function, and great, uh, this marker is kind of kind of fat, Let's find a skinnier one. Um, so then my gradient to that is, let's see here, differentiate with respect to x, I get 3x squared y to the 4th, differentiate with respect to y, I get 4 x cubed, y cubed. Differentiate with respect to z, this term is constant, and that gives me 3z squared. All right, so again, this would define a vector field um, as x, y, z traces over the surface. Um, and then, so if I want to figure out what's, what's the normal vector at the point in question, just plug it in. And that would give me, let's see here, 3 times minus 1, well, 3 times 1 squared times minus 1 to the 4th, also known as 3. Plug in this into there, I get 4 times 1 cubed times minus 1 cubed, that gives me minus 4. Plug in, and I get 3 times minus 1 squared, which is 3. So there's my normal to the plane. Normal to tangent plane, right? I'm saying tangent space. I, you could call it a tangent space if you like. Anyway, and now I also know that that point is a point on the surface, right? So therefore, I do 3 times x minus 1 minus 4 times y plus 1 minus a minus is a plus and minus, or rather, plus 3 times z minus a minus 1, which is z plus 1. That equals to zero. There you go. That is the equation of the tangent plane to that surface at that point. Right? And uh, don't even ask me how to graph that surface, and, and yet here you go. This is a good approximation to that surface near the point 1 minus 1 minus 1, which is kind of cool. So my next example in the cover sheet it concerned a parametrized surface, right? So now we're going to turn our attention to parametrized surfaces. Let's try to understand What's the connection between the um, what's the connection between the level function description of a surface and the parametrized description of a surface? And so what I do here um, on this next page of notes or so is I derive from the chain rule 
from the perspective that you already know something about the level surface perspective. And I show you that, well, if you had a parameterization, it necessarily ties into the calculus of the level, level, level function. In particular, if we had a level surface and we had a, a parameterization of it, then the key thing for the parameterization is that if you plug the parameterization into the level equation, it works, right? Like, for example, if we had x squared plus uh, x squared plus y squared, you know, um, equal to 1, that's a cylinder, right? Z is free. You could, you could use as your parameterization um, r of theta z. That could be a parameterization, right? And you just put, well, cosine theta, sine theta, uh, z, because z equals z. And the thing is, if you, if you call this thing f of x, y, z, the z is kind of, the z dependence is trivial in this case. If you plug in f, not vector, but just plain old f, f of r of theta z, well, that is f of cosine theta, sine theta z, which is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is equal to 1. In other words, this is a parameterization of, 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 of that level surface. Uh, there's just kind of a the z just rides along in this example. So the question then is, what is the relation between the level function and the, um, the derivatives of the parameterization, or the patch of the surface, all right? Okay, okay, so if we compose them, then we have chain rules, right? So like partial f partial u is, well, it's, it's the gradient of f dot partial r partial u, and partial f partial v is most elegantly understood as the gradient of f dotted with partial r partial v. Now, these, these, these partial r partial u and partial r partial v, I sometimes call these partial velocities. Or you could just call them the velocities um, of, of the parameterization. In fact, I may not even say those words in these notes, but this is something you could call them if you wanted a name for them. All right, partial velocities of the parameterization. And um, you can see then that, they, well, they have to be perpendicular, right? This calculation here shows you that they have to be perpendicular to the gradient vector, right? And so if you envision all three of these vectors attached to a point of S, right? And I'll foolishly attempt a picture of that here. All right, so if, if this is S, I think I have a picture like this on the next page, but just to put it here, you know, you could you could look at maybe this is the direction of partial r, partial u, right? Maybe this is the direction of partial r, partial v, and they should be tangent to the surface, right? Because they are the tangent vectors to the lines where you've either fixed the um, the v coordinate. So, like, if you fix the v coordinate, it gives you one of those lines. If you fix the u coordinate, it gives you that line. And the partial r partial v is the uh, the tangent vector to the coordinate line which has u fixed. Partial r partial u is the tangent vector to the coordinate line which has v fixed. Um, and those are those lines I was talking about in the picture earlier. But of course, you can also see right in your mind's eye that if you have that surface, we know that the gradient points like this, right? This is the gradient of the level surface at that point. And so what's the relation between the partial velocities and the gradient vector? Well, they're, they're perpendicular, right? And so because we're in three dimensions and everything's so nice and nice and nice and tidy here, we, we can see that this, um, you know, if we take the cross product of the partial velocities, that should give us a normal vector. And that normal vector, right, it's got a line along the direction of the gradient. It might be parallel to the gradient of f, it might be anti-parallel, but it's got to be collinear with that gradient of f. So to calculate, in short, to calculate the normal direction um, given the parameterization of the surface, all we got to do is calculate the cross product of the partial velocities, and that's 
that's how we do that, all right? And this is the normal vector field for a parametrized surface. We just calculate partial r partial u cross partial r partial v, and that gives us the normal vector field. Um, that's, that's a pretty big contrast, right? Versus what? In the level function, how's it go? Versus gradient of f um, is, you know, um, normal vector field. If we describe the surface by, you know, the set of points which satisfy f equal to a constant. Um, I mean, those those viewpoints are, are quite radically different. This is much easier to calculate, right? This is this is harder to calculate, but they're both, um, you know, both important. And um, I mean, we don't always have an equation for the surface either, is the thing, right? Sometimes the surface comes to us with a parameterization, like this example is one of those. So here's the example I gave at the start. Let's work it out now. I'm sure I have more examples in the notes. I just wanted to add. A couple of examples here to help try to help you guys. Um, so, I mean, if I was teaching this residentially, I would just make up examples in class, and they they you know go where they go. But um, all right, so for this, we have a parameterization of some surface, right? U cosine v, u sine v, u. So to calculate the normal vector field, I need to calculate. By definition, the normal vector field as a function of u and v is partial r partial u cross partial r partial v. Notice that if we changed the meaning of u and v and we flipped their order, that would turn the normal upside down because the cross product is not commutative. Um, so like the order of the parameters matters. It fixes a uh, an orientation to the surface. It tells you which side is up. Um, okay, anyway, what is partial r partial u here? Partial r partial u is cosine v sine v 1. And we take the cross product with partial r partial v, which is minus u sine v, u cosine v. And thankfully, the derivative of v of u with respect to v is 0. Um, so I'll go back to my usual determinant formulation, right? Sorry, my writing's getting kind of small here. I hope you know what I'm doing. And what's that give us? Well, for x hat, we've got, looks like minus u cosine v. For the y hat, we've got, let's see, minus, I got three minuses, I think minus u, oh, that was cosine squared, my apologies, because uh, that was cosine times cosine there on the, um, wait a minute. Oh, nope, nope, just one. That was one times u cosine v. My, my, I'm stupid. Y hat, uh, oh, it's just minus u sine v. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to invent a sine squared where it is not existing, but um, my bad. And z hat, we get um, u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v. Oh, we can factor out the u, that's nice. So we get minus u cosine v minus u sine v, and this is just u again. So allegedly, that's the normal vector field right there. Um, the normal vector field to the surface is given by the cross product of the partial velocities. That's how you calculate that, just like that. There's our normal vector field. that should point perpendicular to the surface at the point r of u v. Now, um, as a quick check, you should take the dot product of what I just boxed with the original two partial velocities. And let's see here, that gives me minus u cosine squared v, minus u sine squared v, plus u. So that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So you get minus u plus u, which is 0. Great. Dot product of that with that is 0. And we take the dot product of this with that, I just get a plus u cosine sine and a minus u squared cosine sine, so they can't yet yeah, cancel. So that, that checks, it's perpendicular. And then the equation of the tangent space, well, okay, now I have to evaluate 
my normal vector field at 1 comma pi over 2. Alright, and um, sorry, I'm fighting with my mouse pad here. And so I plug in u equals to 1, right, u equals to 1, v equals to pi over 2 into these formulas. What do we get? Cos oh, um, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that gives me 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, and so that gives me minus 1. And, oh, I said u is 1, right? So there you go, there's your normal vector field. Um, and so that's my normal to the to the, um, the tangent space. And that's at the point r of 1 comma pi over 2. So with the parameterization, I actually have to figure out where that point is, right? I plug in u equals to 1 and um, v equals to pi over 2 back into my parameterization, and that gives me what? It gives me... Um, well, 0, because cosine pi over 2 is 0, and um, 1, because u is 1, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and then 1, 0, 1, 1. So there's a point on the surface, there's the normal to the tangent space, so I can write it down now. I've got 0 times x minus 0, right? Minus 1 times y minus 1 plus 1 times z minus 1 equals to 0. That's the equation of my tangent my tangent plane. But, of course, I can simplify that, right? That's actually um, minus y plus z equals to, I mean, that gives me minus a minus, which is plus 1 minus 1. Oh, so that's 0. So actually, you could say that the, uh, the tangent plane is actually z equals to y, if you liked. Now, how would, you, how would you do this problem from the perspective of a level surface? How would you do this example two as a level surface? What would you have to do? So think about it. You'd have to find an equation which defines this surface. Um, now, you could do that. I mean, if you wanted to, this one is simple enough. You could see if this is x and this is y and this is z, right? The question is, can you find an equation in x, y, z, right? Can you eliminate the parameters through appropriate algebra? So if you look at it, x squared plus y squared is what? x squared plus y squared is, is actually equal to u squared, right? Because we get a cosine squared and a sine squared and a u squared factors out. After sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And, but u squared is z squared, so eh, I'll check it out. There it is. So this is actually a parameterization of a cone. This is the equation of a cone. x squared plus y squared equals to z squared. Right? This is, in fact, a cone. Actually, it's a double cone. The equation is a double cone. And um, for my, I mean, this is a part of it. It's the part where z is positive. All right? And so... Once you find that, you could go back to the method of example one and, and calculate the, uh, you know, you could look at f of x, y, z equal to x squared, good grief, not a vector, um, x squared plus y squared minus z squared as your level function, right? And um, here, I'll, I'll continue on the next page just to finish the thought here. Um, So, you know, so what I'm trying to show you here is we could take a given example and look at it in two different worlds if you wanted to. And sometimes it's easier in the level surface world, and sometimes it's easier in the parameterized world, and you just, you got to be flexible and willing to work both, both directions. Certainly, as we talk about calculus later, we'll mostly be working in the parameterized world. Um... But there it is, there's the gradient vector field, and so we were we were just looking at what point it turned out. We were looking at the point, uh, you know, 0, 1, 1. So if I calculate 0, 1, 1 for this one, I get what? I get 0, 2, minus 2. So this is my normal, which is, which is like parallel to the normal we found before, what was... What was the normal I found before? Yeah, 
it was uh, 0, 1, minus, well, 0, minus 1. Oh, 0, minus 1, 1, actually, not normal. It was what? This is anti... I mean, these are <clears throat> in opposite directions, right? And in fact, this one is length is double the length of that. But you see, that doesn't matter. They still define the same basic equation, which is minus 1 um, times y minus 1 plus 1 times z minus 1 equals to 0. And of course, that is minus y plus z uh, equal to 0. In contrast to what we found in the last approach, which was, oh wait a minute, it was also minus <laughs> <laughs> minus y uh, plus z equal to zero. Oh, I'm an idiot. I just used that one again. Of course I found the same thing. Duh. <laughs> sad. Sad, 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 sad. If I go from this one, that would suggest two times... Uh, <laughs> two, two times... Two times y minus one. Sorry. I crack myself up. Uh, z minus 1 equal to 0. And that would give us 2y minus 2z minus 2 plus 2 gives me 0. So this is sort of the natural equation of the tangent plane from, from this way of thinking. You know? So which is the right equation for the tangent plane? The answer is yes. They're both legitimate equations for the tangent plane. The equation for the tangent plane is not unique. It, it can be multiplied by a non-zero number, and it doesn't change the equation. All right, enough of that. Let's go on here. So the, the, the big takeaway message here was that the normal vector field to a parameterized surface is given by the, the you know, cross product of partial velocities. That's how we calculate the normal vector field from you know, the parametric perspective. And um, here's a lovely picture of everything that's involved. This is a great picture. If it has color, and it does have color, if you look in the electronic version, you know, so what I'm, what I'm graphing here is, um, you know, we have the coordinate line like that. That red line is coming from fixing V. You notice it's got V equals to V naught. V naught's fixed, right? And then the other one, this, I called it beta, this line is coming from fixing u. So if either fix one coordinate or the other, you fix one parameter or the other, rather, and you get these coordinate lines. And then the velocity vectors to those coordinate lines are the partial velocities. You take the cross product of those and you get that, that normal vector, which is perpendicular to both of them. And you just do that each, at each point, and there you go. you got your handy-dandy normal vector field. So, ah, an example. Well, you know, let me try to get started here. Um, so, oh goodness, this is almost the, almost the same example I just looked at, except what? What's the difference with this example versus the one I wrote out by hand just a second ago? Notice that here, well, first of all, I've got a 2. I've got not a 2 there. I've got a u squared, but it's kind of similar. Um, but, I mean, you could find a corresponding Cartesian equation for this if you wanted to. Um, if I was to look for the corresponding equation, I would use sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1 to play that game. But let me stop doing that. That's kind of a weird side side discussion. Anyways, focus here. Stay on track. All right, so um, there's my patch. It's given, right? I calculate the partial velocities, differentiate with respect to u, differentiate with respect to v. I get this and that. Um, since I'm interested in the point where u is equal to 1 and v is equal to 0, I plug in u equal to 1, v equal to 0, and I just get 2, 0, 1, and 0, 2, 0, and then I take the cross product of those to get the normal vector field at that point. Of course, you could also do it symbolically to calculate the normal vector field, right? But if you're just interested in one point, then you don't need to work out the cross product for formulas in U and V. You can just do it for, you know, that specific number right there like that. I'll zoom in a bit. Whoop. So there you go. There's the uh, normal vector field at the point. 
and then you use that to put together the with the point of tangency being one zero one, and just having found that you know um, minus two zero four minus two zero four is the uh, you know normal from the last page. So I do minus two times x minus one plus zero times y minus zero plus four times z minus one and there you go that's the equation of the tangent plane right there. So example 4.6.5 what's this about? Here I say I look at an arbitrary plane with normal vector ABC right and first of all I point out that if you look at the plane the normal to the plane is, guess what, ABC, just like we derived from vector geometry earlier in the course. It still matches our current calculus-based way of thinking. And um, if we had um, non-collinear vectors A and B which lie in the plane, then we could build the parameterization by a base point plus U times A plus V times B like we talked about before. And if you did build this as the parameterization, then the partial velocities are actually A and B because when you calculate partial derivative of R with respect to U you just get back A partial R partial V you just get back B in the calculation and so when we calculate the normal vector field we just get A cross B which of course is the normal the constant normal vector field to this plane so this is just the purpose of this example is to say hey guess what everything we did before at the beginning of the course in terms of planes and geometry and cross products, it's still here. Um, you can still make sense of it just the same. Um, and then here's another example. So this one, I have a more interesting surface. Um, R of, and this time I'm using S and T as parameters, right? You don't have to use U and V, you can use other letters like I did with the, the cone example I used. Uh, well, what I, I think I used something else earlier. Anyway, um, R of ST, sorry if that's fuzzy, my, I don't know if it's my eyes or if it's actually the camera. Um, ST is S log ST and T, so partial velocities, I get um, 1 for derivative of S. Derivative of log ST is 1 over ST times the derivative of ST with respect to S, which is just T again. So then the T's cancel, it just leaves us 1 over S. Another way you could see that would just be to notice if you don't do the chain rule, another way you could do that would be like log of st is by properties of logs, log s plus log t, right? So when you differentiate this with respect to s, you just get 1 over s. When you differentiate with respect to t, you just get 1 over t. That's probably even easier than the chain rule. So um, there's your partial velocities. And um, now apparently I'm just interested in the point um, when s equals 1 and t equals 1. So that gives me 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1 for partial velocities. I take the cross product of the partial velocities. It gives me the normal vector at the point. And so I can construct the tangent plane. There it is. So we talked about um, two of the viewpoints I talked about at the start, right? We've talked about level surface. We talked about parameterized surface, how to find the tangent plane. Now let's talk about a graph. So a graph we can look at either as a level surface Right, so one way to look at, so what z equals f of xy, right? You can either look at it as the equation z minus f of xy equal to zero, right? So it's a level surface. Or, alternatively, you can use x and y as parameters and say r of x comma y is x comma y comma f of xy. So we could take a graph and easily either convert it to an equation or convert it into a parameterization, all right? Um, so graphs are like this kind of happy medium, which is really close to both viewpoints, right? And so the question is, given a graph, how do you find the tangent plane to the graph? Well, um, if you were to use this, this remark here, which is not the, the, um, the way the, uh, the typesetting is in your current notes, there's no box, it's like just red text, but Anyway, basically what I derive in here is that if we if we did set f equal to, if we did set the, the level function as z minus f of x, y, and you calculate the gradient of f, then you get 
you know, the gradient of f is minus fx minus fy1. Because, you know, if you calculate, for example, if we calculate partial partial x of z minus f, 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 f is a function of x and y, well, that's 0 minus partial f partial x, which is just minus fx in this notation, right? So that's the x derivative. And then, like, similarly, when we differentiate the formula z minus f, we get f minus fy for the y partial. And when you differentiate z minus f with respect to z, well, you get 1. So, so great. That's, that's what you get from the level surface perspective. From the parameterized perspective, we get partial velocity, partial x velocity of, um, you know, and so what am I referencing here? I'm, I'm referencing, I'll write it down here so we can see it in the same frame. But this I'm using R of x, y. It's written up at the top of the thing, but x comma y comma f of x, y, right? That's the parameterization of a graph, using x and y as parameters. And um, so partial r partial x is 1, 0, fx. Partial r partial y is 0, 1, fy. And um, so to calculate the normal vector field, we take the cross product of the partial velocities, and guess what we get? We get minus fx minus fy, 1. Which is cool because, of course, this, right, matches that. And so, if we do z minus f, the normal vector field from the level surface, and the normal vector field from the cross product of partial velocities, they'll match up, actually. Got to be careful. If you instead did f minus z, then that would turn this over and make it upside down. But, in any way. Alright, so... Now that I've chased that rabbit, <laughs> let's talk about how to actually find the equation of the tangent plane of a graph. Here it is right here. So if you look at this equation, which is the natural one from what we just found, um, excuse me. Uh, so we have um, I think that the 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 oh there's a typo right there guys I'm sorry um look th th this is not supposed to just be z it's supposed to be plus um one times let's say z minus f of a b perhaps. Let me just write it out again here. Let me, let me grab a separate sheet of paper. This doesn't need to be mysterious. So for a graph, if we're looking at the point a comma b comma f of a b, want to find the equation of the tangent plane there, right? We just figured out that the normal is equal to like minus fx at the point a b minus fy at the point a b. That's partial x derivative, partial y derivative and then 1, right? So if that's my point, that's my normal vector, then I do minus fx at the point times x minus a minus fy at the point times y minus b, right? Plus 1 times what? Times z minus f of a b. And that is equal to 0. So if you solve this thing, you get z is equal to f of a comma b plus fx a comma b times x minus a plus fy of a comma b times y minus b, right? And that is the boxed equation. That is the equation for a tangent plane of a graph. And actually, this thing I just put here this is the so-called linearization of that function at the point a, b as a function of x and y. This is the linearization of f. Like we talked about a little bit in the gen uh, generalized derivative section. Um, you know, now I'm actually showing you some quick and dirty formulas for how to find the linearization of a function of two variables. You use the I mean, if you look at that, that's nothing more than the gradient dotted with the difference vector. 
I'm sure I have those equations in the notes next. Let me look back here. Well, I, I guess I'll get back to it. Um, I mean, to start with, I'm just giving you an example, right? So here's the function x squared plus y squared. The tangent plane at 1, 2, 5 is thus z equals f of 1, 2, comma, fx at 1, 2, times x minus 1, times fy at 1, comma, 2, times y minus 2, which works out to z plus f equals 5 plus 2 times x minus 1 plus 4 times y minus 2. Um, so, yeah, I mean, here's another example. Um, so we've got z, uh, f of x, y is x squared minus, exponential of x squared minus y squared. I say find the equation of the tangent plane when x equals 1 and y equals minus 1. So I start out by calculating the uh, partial derivatives. Chain rule, chain rule, right? And once I have that, then I can use those formulas I just found on the previous page. And I can plug in the point which is in which I had and when you plug it in you get e to the zero right because the thing is when we plug in one one minus one we get one squared minus one squared I mean you get one minus one in the exponential arguments in both cases so the um, partial derivatives just work out to they have an e to the zero in both of the formulas when you plug in that particular point and so that's why we just get exponential of 0, 2 times 1, exponential 0, times x minus 1, minus 2 times minus 1, exponential 0, times y plus 1, which gives us that. There you go. That's the equation to the tangent plane to that graph. And, um, and then the final example here is foreshadowing. This is part of a larger discussion. Um, you know, if you take a, you know, a, a surface, like a graph, and you find its tangent plane approximation, that's the first part of the approximation to the surface, and then if you keep going, um, then you have like quadratic pieces, and, and even there could be cubic and quartic and so forth and higher order pieces. And so this is part of a larger discussion about how we can approximate a, a function of several variables using a first order piece and then a second order piece. This is basically a lead into the discussion of the multivariate Taylor expansion, as I, as I mentioned down there. But anyway, I think I've showed you the main three things, which is how you find the tangent plane, equation of the tangent plane of a level surface, how do you find the equation of the tangent plane for a parameterized surface, and of course, how do you find the equation of a tangent plane to a graph. Those are the three things you got to know, and um, they're all pretty easy once you know what you're doing. You need to understand which is the right tool for the job that you're considering, right? And so um, the question is, well, the question is, what is the question, right? If the question gives you a surface defined by an equation, then you should use the level surface way, right? If the problem gives you a surface defined by a patch by a parameterization, then you need to take the cross product of the partial velocities to find the normal vector field. If the example gives you a surface defined as a graph, then you want to use this guy, right, as your quick... Um, way to get to the equation of the tangent plane. But you guys get a sheet of notes, so you should have all three of these things um, ready to go for your uh, for your next test or whatever. So thanks guys. I'll stop there for now.